Your personal spirit guides have so many ways to communicate with you really at any point during the day or throughout your life experience. Your spirit guides can communicate through dreams, through signs, synchronicities, angel numbers, and of course, one way for your spirit guides to reach you is through the content that comes across your feed, either on YouTube or some other kind of social media platform. So for some of you listening, this video aligning with you or popping up on your feed may be one of your personal spirit guides reaching out to you in this way. And in this reading, I've really just felt inspired to open up the reading and channel whatever spirit guides connected to certain individuals in our collective want to come through with specific messages for specific individuals. This is a bit of a unique style of reading. I'm not sure I've done a reading specifically like this. So if you do like this reading style, let me know in the comments. Also, feel free to comment if anything during the reading is connecting for you personally. And I'm going to start off the reading by shuffling the traditional tarot card deck, but I also want to introduce myself to those of you who might be new here. So if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Infinity, and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. I do channel collective reading videos here on the channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but between those collective readings, I like to do what I call mini readings, which is what this video is. So if my energy resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe, join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. Okay, so I have to say for the beginning of this reading, it's funny, I got a little tongue tied. It's almost like there might be someone romantically connected to you who wants to say something but keeps getting tongue tied and maybe your guides are coming through to let you know that the person's energy you're feeling that you're sensing something from, you can trust your intuition on that. They're just feeling a little tongue tied and a little unsure how to word what they're trying to say. This might be someone in general who has insecurities about not being able to communicate themselves or come across to others in the way that they want to present themselves or present what they're saying. I know that's a bit of a random message, but what I was going to say before that moment is that I keep getting the letter initials M, A, R, and G. I'm also getting the name Margaret or something similar to that for someone listening. I know that is extremely specific, but I do want to channel any specifics that happen to come through. I am seeing some kind of pearl necklace or bracelet for someone as well. And at the very beginning of the reading, I kept hearing a message from someone's guides. It's safe to let go. It's safe to let go. And I'm getting this wave of chills. I feel there's such a powerful energy attached to that message. We are going to get into that. But I also feel that if that message is for you, you intuitively might know how that resonates. I'm getting that it will be different for everyone because for someone listening, this might be related to a love situation where you've been wanting to let go or wanting to walk away for yourself, but maybe you've been wondering if this is selfish, wanting to stay with a person or in a situation out of this heavy sense of obligation. Wow, this is a really, really intense message for someone, but I'm hearing that it's like you've been released from an obligation. You've been released from some kind of contract and it's safe to let go now. It's safe to walk away if that's what your heart desires. And if you are feeling misunderstood or disrespected or something in a certain situation, this might not even be a relationship. This could be a friendship. This could be a job. Whatever this is for you, I'm just hearing 
It's like you've been released from an obligation or released from a contract, spiritually speaking, and it's safe for you to move towards places, spaces, and connections that make you feel safe, that make you feel seen, respected, understood. I'm also getting a general message for someone listening that in general, There might have been times recently where you've been in the middle of a conversation, an interaction, a social environment, and you've just been thinking, I feel like I can't speak my truth here. I'm feeling stifled. I'm feeling like I am not being seen or I'm not being understood. It's almost like there's this voice inside of you that just wants to scream because you may have been talking to a certain person and there was just this awareness that this was someone who absolutely could not see you or could not understand you at this deeper level. And my eyes are kind of starting to tear up. I don't know who this is for, but I feel that you need to know, first of all, any feelings of frustration or anger or sadness you may have had in this interaction were not indications that something was wrong with you. It was simply you sensing that sensing that you were trying to communicate or interact with someone who was on a very different vibrational level. And the thing is, if you and another person are on a very different frequency vibrationally, no amount of words will make you understand each other. No amount of physically laying eyes on each other will make you feel seen by one another because the vibrations are too different. And it's almost like that voice inside of you was trying to yell through a glass wall, like just being able to see the other person, but not feeling heard, feeling completely unheard, unmisunderstood. It's kind of difficult to find the words to describe this sensation, but I feel that someone may have even judged themselves for feeling frustrated about this person or interaction or this space or for feeling these these intense emotions of grief or sadness or whatever it was for you. But I'm hearing to just allow yourself to be present with what you're feeling, to allow those feelings to pass through you and that they will pass. And that if you did have that emotional experience recently, This, again, it has nothing to do with anything being out of alignment within you. It's that you were trying to communicate or interact in a place, a space, or with a person who truly was not on your frequency, who is not on your level, and that caused your soul to feel frustrated or to feel upset because it wasn't being seen, it wasn't being heard. And I'm also getting this general message that more and more, especially as collectively we are ascending into consistently higher levels of vibration, you are going to find that the ones who are meant for you, you will not have to explain yourself to. You will not have to defend yourself. You won't have to try to make them understand you or see you or value you because the connection will be underlying. It will be inevitable. It will just be there. Your souls will be able to see each other and to communicate with each other even without words. Words won't be necessary to to make someone understand you who is meant to be in your life and to fully align with you and connect with you. And that is one way that you will know that you will know someone is good for your soul when you can drop the guard, when you can drop the need to over explain yourself or to defend yourself because sometimes I feel that some of this frustration coming up is like maybe someone recently misunderstood you or tried to attack you verbally in some way or tried to deconstruct you or to get you to explain or defend yourself but it felt like the more you were saying the less they were understanding this is because of those vibrational differences that we're talking about Most of our communication as humans doesn't even happen with our words. It happens energetically. It happens telepathically. So that person that was on such a different vibration couldn't hear you, couldn't hear the meaning of your words, regardless of how many words you were utilizing. 
Maybe that's the situation for someone that your guide is saying it's safe to let go or it's maybe safe to let go of the need to be understood by that person. Maybe you do still need or desire to be in that person's presence or in the presence of those places or environments, but the message might be for you, it's safe to let go of the need for them to get you or to see you or to understand you. You are going to succeed regardless, but in your own unconventional way. For some reason, I'm hearing lucky 21. I don't know if that connects with anyone. The number 21 may be significant in some way. We also have the the, I almost said fall. So maybe for some of you, you're in the Southern hemisphere where we are entering the season of fall. Personally, I'm in the Northern hemisphere. So we're entering the season of spring. But I heard something about the fall or spring equinox, which of course is coming up in just a few days, depending on where you are in the world, of course, will define whether this is going to be the fall equinox or the spring equinox. But with the Hierophant reversed, this is about challenging the status quo, challenging the norm, being unconventional. So I'm hearing that yes, with the world card, you are going to fulfill every dream goal and desire that you hold in your soul from a pure place, meaning that's aligned with who you really are at a deeper level, but you're going to do it in your own unconventional way. So I'm getting a message from someone's guides about keeping an open mind when it comes to how your goals, dreams, or desires manifest. Maybe you were very focused or fixated on things happening through a certain avenue or in a certain way, but your guides have been trying to show you that yes, you are going to manifest the core essence of that dream or goal, but the way that you are going about it might be beyond the comprehension of your own human conscious mind, and it might be a very unconventional path. So I know this could look different from person to person, but just as a specific example, maybe you've been wanting to manifest a certain level of financial abundance physically, and it's like the guides are saying, yes, that's going to happen for you, but maybe you thought that you could only manifest that through a certain pathway, so you'd been really focused on it has to come through this specific job or this specific avenue. And it's almost like your guides are trying to open your mind and say, yes, that's going to happen for you, but it's going to happen in a way that you might not expect or that might look very unconventional to others. This is a bit of a side message, and this will only resonate for likely a few people, but for some, you might be being asked to reevaluate certain goals, dreams, or desires and to cross analyze them, not through the mind, but with your feelings and with the soul to kind of cross analyze them with your core values to see if there might be certain dreams, goals, or ideas that you are clinging on to that may have been things that you wanted prior to your awakening or prior to going through this ego death experience that might not even be what you truly desire at a core level anymore or might be what you thought you were supposed to desire or what you thought you were supposed to want. Again, I know that's a very specific message and that won't be for everyone, but anything that you desire at the core soul level can happen in your life, but there might be certain things or aspects that you've been kind of clinging onto that your soul has been asking you to reevaluate. Now, you will know this message is for you if those things have just felt a little off to you or a little uneasy for you, like maybe you think about something manifesting or happening and instead of feeling pure excitement and passion which would indicate that it's really aligned with your soul there's a part of you that kind of feels uneasy about it or unsure about it that can actually be a sign that perhaps certain aspects of that goal or dream aren't necessarily in alignment with who you now are. They might resonate with a past version of you, but not really connect with what your soul truly craves and desires. 
And again, that won't necessarily be for everyone. That will only be for those of you who have felt those feelings of uneasiness, maybe kind of going back and forth, like, do I really want that specific thing? Feeling a little unsure about it consistently, that could be a sign that you actually might be trying to manifest something or certain aspects of a dream that may no longer really resonate with what you purely desire at the soul level. But of course, those pure soul level desires will reveal themselves to you through your feelings of passion and pull and enthusiasm. So if you're feeling that way about the goal dream or vision, know that it is really aligned with the core of your soul and that you're on track for it as you follow out those feelings of passion. Now, since we're talking about manifesting your heart and soul desires, I do want to share with you my personal most powerful manifestation tool. And these are subliminals. Subliminals are audio meditation tracks that contain unconscious spoken affirmations that are designed to bypass the conscious filter of the mind. And therefore, these affirmations can make deeper, more lasting impressions on the subconscious, which of course, as we know, research has shown that the subconscious actually controls 95% of our thoughts, actions, and outcomes in life. So when we harness the power of the subconscious mind and reprogram what's happening in the subconscious, we can really magnetize ourselves for our true goals, dreams, and desires and manifest them much more quickly. Personally, I have seen the most powerful results through using subliminals for the last seven years on almost a daily basis. I tried many different manifestation techniques prior to subliminals and none of them ever brought me nearly the same level of results. So I am so passionate about subliminals that I'm really excited to be sharing my very own subliminals app with all of you. The app is called Sound and Soulful, and it's now available in both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. So as you can see on the screen, on this app, I have over 130 subliminals for essentially every area of life. You can listen to each subliminal in 10 different background sound options depending on your personal preference. You can also combine them into your own custom private playlists and you can even read the affirmations while you are listening. Specifically for this reading, of course, if there are specific goals or dreams you are trying to manifest, you can browse through the subliminals in the app and find different ones that resonate with those specific goals. But I would really recommend adding to your playlist my seven chakra clearing subliminal because this is really powerful for a comprehensive energy clearing, clearing out any limiting beliefs you might have that are preventing you from fully accessing your highest potential. This is one that I personally use on a daily basis on my own personal playlist. So it's really great to have this in your playlist along with those other subliminals that might resonate with more specific desires because this will help you to really unlock and access that pure potential within you beneath all of those limiting beliefs that may have been holding you back in the past. So if you would like to download my app and sign up for a seven day free trial account, the link to do so is in the pinned comment and description box underneath the video. Okay, so here we have the three of wands in the upright position. So this is about moving forward with confidence, hard work paying off. So there may have been something that you've been intuitively moving towards for a while because this is sitting on the third eye chakra. And I'm hearing that, especially in the last few years for the person I'm speaking to, you've been on this track of being so intuitively guided that you can hardly remember what it's like to make decisions purely from the conscious level. Following your intuition has become nearly secondhand for you. 
you're being kept on this track intentionally by your higher self and your guides because it's actually the fast track to manifesting the things that you desire rather than operating at that shallow level of the mind you are moving being inspired from a much deeper place you might be very resistant as well to making any choices or decisions from that level of the mind that feel off to you intuitively or emotionally. And although other people around you may question that, they may not understand how you are so intuitively guided, why you are moving in the way that you are, know that again, this is how you are manifesting at this time. This is how things are coming into full-blown fruition into your life. Now, I am seeing the death card, which represents ego death and spiritual transformation in a symbolic sense. And so I feel a lot of past energy from this card. This may be speaking to the fact that you've lived many lives in this one physical incarnation, meaning you've had to shed your skin many times. You may have been through many ego death experiences or many layers of awakening to become this queen of cups energy that you now are. So you are really coming up as the queen of cups, someone who it's funny, this card connects with someone who makes decisions based on their intuition, based on their emotions. And that's exactly what we were channeling. So that's a major sign of confirmation, but you also have this very nurturing energy. And I'm hearing that the things you are accomplishing for yourself will be accomplished for others because you had the courage to do them for yourself. And what I mean by that is when you focus on yourself, when you follow your heart, your intuition, when you manifest your goals and dreams and break through those limiting beliefs, you are naturally as a byproduct of that uplifting those around you and the collective as a whole as well. I'm hearing there's really no such thing as being selfish in your case, because when you make those choices that are for your highest good, you are benefiting the whole. When you make choices to love yourself, you are opening yourself up to being that beacon of unconditional love that radiates outward towards others. I'm also just getting that others perceive you as a very warm, caring, and nurturing person. And you have people that speak these types of things about you when you're not around. I'm hearing there are people you may not even be fully aware of who defend your name or speak very well of you even when you're not in the room. It's like your reputation both precedes you and also follows after you. Like before you enter a space, you have a reputation that precedes you. People speak very positively of you, or at least certain individuals do. But also when you leave a space environment or connection, you leave this impression that people remember and that people talk about, that people find themselves unable to stop thinking about. In fact, this may even indicate that there are certain romantic people in your aura, connected to your aura or your energy, who you may have left this kind of impression on. So you may not actively be in their life physically, but they are still thinking very positively of you or feeling this warm, admiring energy towards you. Now, I am going to close the reading here. But I do feel that this isn't the end of the story, meaning that there are most likely more messages that will be coming through on these topics in future readings. So if you do want to get notified when those reading videos come out, then I do recommend subscribing here to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at Magnetize Yourself, where I post more energy updates, information, and inspiration. And I don't always do this in the mini readings, but I'm really feeling guided to read a final roomy oracle card to close out this reading and this card says beyond the threshold of fear so i'm going to read a message from the guidebook here enter the lion's jungle don't think about getting hurt fearful thoughts are phantoms of the mind no one is harmed in this jungle Everything is compassion and love. It is your fear holding you back, like a bar behind the door. Rumi. And the guidebook also says, How I celebrate for you. 
after so long away from home, you are finally returning. Wow, I'm getting goosebumps all over because I feel that's almost a direct closing message from someone's guides. Beyond the threshold of fear, you dispense with your doubts, hesitations, cautions, and tentativeness. They are old friends with whom you no longer have anything in common. After so long, you are changing your relationship to fear. No more shall it hold you in its thrall. You are becoming able to observe it, to witness it, even to have compassion rather than resistance. Instead of unconsciously sabotaging your growth and choosing to slumber in darkness, you awaken and delight in the light and sound of your divine being. Wow, what a beautiful closing message to end this reading. Of course, all of these readings are co-creations. So thank you for bringing your energy to the reading today, for being such a powerful co-creator here. Of course, if you do want to download my subliminals app and start reprogramming your own subconscious mind to manifest your soul's desires in life. The link to download the app is in the pinned comment and description box underneath the video. I am sending you all so much love. Have a beautiful remainder of your day and I will connect with you here again in the next video.